Friday morning she got up early, stepped over my sleeping bag and went to school. There was a note. She had a few minutes to meet me at the bakery in town next to the record store at 5.30. When she was out the back door, I fell into her bed and slept until early afternoon. I got to the bakery early and ate a terrible vegan brand of I practically choked on it, it was so dry. She showed up right at 5.30 and smiled and said she wanted to show me around town a little bit. She walked us down to the swollen river running through Kansas. My dad said he just sent me this new book about some old covered bridges around here, Jenny said offhand after passing a bookstore. He said it's been on the bestseller list for over a month. The bridges of such and such, I forget. What is it, a, a tour book? I don't know, I, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I said absently. Are you okay, man? Do you feel all right? Fine. Why? When we got past the academic buildings and reached the river, the water was 20 or 30 feet up into the grass. As if it weren't, as if it were just grass. She took off her sandals and waded down to a park bench floating just above the water line. I threw my harachis up on the high ground and did the same. For 10 or 20 minutes I sat and listened to her talk about how important her poetry is to her, and poetry in general. Then she laughed the whole subject away like a bit of foolishness and turned to look at the part of the river just past me, staring across my knees. Oh, guess what? I bought a typewriter. It's just the best. It's so much fun to use. It makes so much noise, it's like I'm physically scaring away all my demons. She stopped. Wow, that's great, I said in full agreement. So come on, tell me, where are you guys going next? She asked. Then staring even farther down river, distracted by something it seemed. Maybe excited, I wondered, with the mere subject of road tripping. Nowhere, I said, and I saw right then that this was going to be it, the extent of things. There wasn't going to be any cataclysmic touching. She's thinking about other things. Someone else, perhaps, I was positive. The distance was familiar at first, once I got my finger on it, but a private embarrassment settled down on top of me, and up from underneath me also. A sudden blast of catatonic weakness exploded within me. The river surged up and grabbed my throat. The fast brown water pulled me down and dragged me out along the black bottom miles and miles, all the way down to where the flooded Iowa River meets the flooded Mississippi, and then hard and dark down the full mid-belly of the country to New Orleans and the Delta and the Gulf of Mexico and out across the Caribbean into the sweet deeper waters of the southern Atlantic. I floated around there peacefully for a while until the sharks came. She said, come on. She was late for a date with a new friend, the guy from last night, she said. She drove me across town to Abe's hotel in her same old VW Rabbit, the one Ernest used to manhandle around Boston all the time. Across the street from the hotel was a soccer field. I thought at first it was a pond or a lake. But my old friend Jenny giggled slightly and said, It really is crazy around here. And that's when I noticed the tops of the soccer goals sticking only three or four feet out of the water, a hundred and twenty yards apart, and the top of a swing set just on the other side. Take care of yourself, man, she said as she pulled up under the motel carport. She smiled. It's too bad you guys can't stay long. For a second I was thinking, well, whoever said I couldn't stay long. And say bye to Abe the babe for me. Right, of course. I will. I stalled. I asked her to get out for a second. She got out and came around the back of her little car, clearly a little hesitant. She was walking quickly, maybe just late for her date. 
I grabbed her and pulled her in for an embrace. But I didn't know what kind. Maybe some animalistic squeeze, and maybe even an impromptu kiss. She let me get my arms around her, but I felt no claws on my back this time. My hands fell to my sides. The big dumb volcano jumped to the top of my chest and suffocated me like a diabolical gland. You shouldn't worry about things so much, she used to say to me. Yeah, so no big deal. She's driving away. It's not going to happen. Like maybe ever. It wasn't meant to. I've known that all along. Iowa clearly isn't the place it would have happened even if it was going to. It looks so much different when you're actually here. I can handle this. I've done so before. I went inside and asked for Abraham Davis's room. I slipped in and put on HBO. He was most probably awake and annoyed but he didn't say anything at first. When I stopped moving around and ceased my shifting of various limbs and body parts, he rolled over to face my bed. How did it all go? he asked. I said I really didn't feel all that very much like talking about it. He turned the light on. No man, tell me. How did it go? How did what go? I said. And there was a pause. Ah, oh, well. Another pause. I guess she doesn't know what's good for her. Just go to sleep, you. Oh. Or maybe she... I mean... Maybe you... Maybe you're too much of a challenge for her, you know? He paused for a few full seconds. Maybe you're just too much of a challenge. To her femininity, let's say. He stopped again. I thought of that the other day, but I forgot to bring it up. Christ, Abe, I snapped at him, quite pissed off. Don't fucking analyze it. Just shut up, go to bed, go to sleep, stop talking, and turn that fucking light off. 